Hello everyone, it's Alison, the Occupational Therapist up at Pendleside Hospice. Um, today I'm going to look at Energy Conservation Part 2. So I did one, uh, I've already done one already on Energy Conservation Part 1, so make sure you catch up with that. And we're just looking at some simple tips and hints and things that can help you manage your energy levels. And this is particularly true if you are struggling with fatigue. Um, or anything that's really sapping your energy. So it might be treatment that you're going through. Um, it might be that you're post COVID, you know, it might be we've got people picking up on this that have, have had coronavirus and are suffering really badly with post viral fatigue, um, which is really common. So, but for any of you out there watching who is struggling with your fatigue, then this is, these sessions are for you. So part one, I looked at our sort of personal care and showering and things like that and how we can manage that when we, our energy levels are sapped. Um, and today I'm gonna to look at some of the more household tasks. So you might think, oh, I'm not watching that, Alison. But uh, I'm gonna be looking at uh, things we can do when we're cooking, things that we're doing when we're doing household chores like making the bed um, and perhaps shopping. Um, so that's what I'm gonna be looking at today. So it might be that you think part one's for me but not part two. It might be that part two is more used to you than part one. So, so let's talk about um, making the bed for a start. So it's one of those jobs that you might actually decide I'm not going to bother with making the bed. Um, as in, you might just give the quilt a shake and that's all you need to do. That's absolutely fine. What we're going to look at as a little bit as well is like when it, we have to change the bed as well, which... I know from the past, from when I've talked about this with groups of patients, when we've been live with, with people in front of me, then bed making is a bit of a thing. And I've had many a long conversation about changing the duvet. So this will probably come up. So, so we talked last time about remembering the, really looking at three Ps and that's the pacing, planning things and prioritizing things. So the pacing is one of the most important techniques that I teach and it's just really common sense and it's all about taking your time over what you do and it's about putting in rests and breaking an activity, anything you need to do down into small chunks, and doing a bit at a time, sitting, having a rest, perhaps going and having a brew and then coming back and doing a bit more of the job. So the same applies to whatever you're doing. So we're going to apply this now to bed making. So it might be that you put the sheet on and stop and have a rest. Uh, you might change your pillowcases, stop and have a rest. And then do the duvet. The duvet is the big bit. Now we've, we've learned, I've talked about several things. If you live in a two story house and you've got um, a, a stairwell that's open that you can hang things over, if you're lucky enough to have an open stairwell where you know, you've got um, a sort of banister rail across the top of the stairs and it might be somewhere that you quite often put towels to air or yeah, leave things hanging over there. Then it's an ideal place to do the duvet because you can use gravity. Um, so one of the things I always talk about is if you turn your duvet cover inside out and you put your hands right up into the duvet, up into the two corners, and then you, you grab either side of the quilt and then if you have it over the banister and you give it a shake, then the quilt cover comes down over the quilt and it helps, gravity just helps the situation and you can just leave it over the banisters for a bit if you've had enough and you need to rest and then you can come back to it. And if you've got, got to a certain point with it, you can carefully lift the duvet, take it into the bedroom, put it on the bed and then you can get the rest of the quilt in more easily. So that's that's just my one of my top tips for that. If you haven't got stairs, then obviously you can't do it that way. But the inside out technique can still work. So do it inside out. Bring Start bringing the quilt the right way out. A couple of pegs can be really useful just to peg the top corner to on the quilt, over the quilt and the quilt cover. And then it stays in place a little bit when you're trying to pull it down. And again, just plenty of rests. Take your time over it. We're in it for the look think about it is that we're in it for the long haul rather than it, it being a, a quick job that needs to be done and it doesn't matter if you need to just go back to it and come back to it again that just doesn't matter so that's that's Alison's top tips on 
trying to trying to do do the bed. So for planning things, um, it, one of the things it talks about is trying to you know you might need to move around in the bedroom a bit. You know if you can get all the way around the bed, that's easier. Um, and it says that you start and finish one side and then move to the other side so you can only circle the bed once. So it might be that you move around the bed. So rather than toing and froing, you might you, you if you've got a double bed, you put the 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 pillows on the left side, get that all sorted out, and the sheet on, and the sheet on the bottom if you've got a fitted sheet. Do all that bit first, and then go around the other side and tuck the other sheet side in, and put the pillows and sort the pillows on the other side of the bed, and then you're only going, you're not going toing and froing and walking round and round, in round the bed. So that's 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 planning, thinking about planning it a bit more as well, and prioritising it is like taking turns. Is there someone that can help you do it? Um, and sort of keeping a pl bit of a rotor and a plan of when you last change the bed, when it needs doing again, um, trying to work it in on a day when you're perhaps not as busy, where you, you might need to store up a bit of energy to do the, do the job. It might be that you need to rest up a bit before you start, that, all that sort of thing. And those these techniques, these principles, the planning, the, pa the, the pacing and the prioritising, you can just put to any task that you do. So we're going to talk a bit about cooking now. I'm going to move on to cooking. So again, how, you know, pacing it out. That's all about spreading out things over a period of time. So it might be that you um, think about the, you know, the day as a whole. So it might be that you're aiming for your evening meal, but you're starting thinking about that in the morning. So it might be that you start some tasks in the morning. Um, I always, always talk about sitting down where you can. So if you can sit down, there's jobs you can do at the kitchen table, even if that's not in the kitchen, things that lift jobs you can take, perhaps your chopping board and things that you can take into your room where you can just sit down, um, perhaps have a little plastic bag that you can put peelings in, that you can start peeling vegetables sat down um, and just put all the waste ready together either on in a, a bit of a little plastic bag or some kitchen roll and then just take all that back into the kitchen. Or if you're lucky enough to have somewhere to sit down in the kitchen, try and sit down. And, you know, one of my top pieces of equipment that I give out is a perching stool. Um, a perching stool is something that I can get for you. It's on prescription and I can get them for you for free. Um, and they just have a very slight slant on them. So you sort of perch rather than... Um, so it takes all your weight, it takes your weight, but it holds your body in a good position to work. So it's ideal for working at the sink or while you're waiting to get, while you're trying to do jobs at the kitchen work surface. Um, so if you're interested in anything like that, please give me a shout here up at Pendleside. Just ask for Alison, the occupational therapist, and I'll see if I can sort you out. Okay. So, and just plenty of rest. That's what it's all about. The end result is that you're going to have made something yourself. Um, and so... Look at it for the long haul. Don't look at it as oh, I'm really struggling with this because of my fatigue and I'm just not able to get things done. Don't look at it like that. Look at it as I'm going to make this meal. It's going to take me a bit longer than it normally would, but I'm still going to do it. And I'm going to break the tasks down into small chunks and I'm going to do a little bit during the day. The other good good thing is um, planning can mean like making a thing. So say you've got... Um, you're making something like a shepherd's pie or a casserole. Um, if, you, if you're pacing things out really well, it might be that you can manage to make a bigger amount. And then you can put some stuff in the freezer. And then you've got, if you've got a day when you're not so great and you're really not feeling yourself and you're really not feeling like cooking and you're feeling really fatigued, then you can at least get something out of the freezer and warm it up in the microwave. And then you're not using as much energy but you've planned ahead for that, so you've got some nice fresh meals that you can still turn to. Um, get everything ready before you start. So it's always a, it's a top cook's tip. I always think about kitchens and kitchen layout, but a kitchen planner, when they're helping you plan a brand new kitchen, if you're lucky enough to be able to get one, we always talk about where things are, and you tend to have your coffee and your tea by the kettle, you tend to have your cups near there, so you're not toing and froing too much. Um, it might be that you can leave some milk out, so like a jug of milk with a little cover over it that you can leave either, you know, it might be that you can put it near the kettle in a cool place and it stays relatively fresh if you, you're not toing and froing 
um, to the fridge all the time. It, it, you know, it, it might be that you, um, have, have, you know, just got everything to hand ready. So, you know, if you're making a meal, um, yes, we're talking about tea and coffee and everything's there, but if you're making a meal, perhaps get everything out, get your chopping board out, get your pans out, get your knives out. Just think about what you're going to need and get things out of the fridge and bring them over. So everything's ready and around you so you're not toing and froing too much. Um, find recipes that are quick and easy to do. There's lots of really good online resources. Um, the BBC Good Food um, website's extremely good and they've got they categorise things as easy and quick. And if you put in quick supper ideas or quick meal ideas, it'll come up with things that are very quick and easy to do um, that won't take too long. So you still feel like you're making a meal, but you're not having to put lots and lots of effort in. So just have a read, take some time perhaps when you're resting during the day to read through some recipes and think, yes, I could do that um, and things like that. And then prioritising is perhaps, like I've already said, a bit about having things in the freezer. So they're like things you've already prepared. You might be have some ready meals in, um, cans of soup, um, perhaps canned, canned meals as such that you can get. So you can get like tuna salad meals and you can get um, ready stewed steak and things like that that might work for you as, as just being quick and simple things that can help. Ready-made pasta sauces that all you need to do is cook up some pasta and put the sauce on it. Um, things that just make life easier, you know, things like bags of grated cheese, um, ready-prepared vegetables, you can get stir-fry packs from the supermarket that are ready to go. Things like that were all, are all really, really helpful hints to help you feel like you're cooking. So just remember, Take, take those rests when you need them. Perhaps have somewhere to sit in the kitchen, you know, either bring a chair in if you've got a table in there, sit at the table. If you want a perching stool, then let me know. I'm more than happy to help. Um, just think about those things that are quick and easy to do that you enjoy. And let, you know, the hope is that you can still enjoy the cooking, um, but by bringing in some of these principles to help you along. Um, look at quickly at shopping have a rest if you can when you get to the shop it might be i know it's difficult at the moment because the cafes are only just reopening as we talk but you know if there's somewhere you can sit perhaps sit in the car when you get there for a while just to feel you're ready to go in use a trolley so you can rest on the trolley stop take breaks check your shopping list make sure you're organized hopefully it's a supermarket you know so you know your way around it so you can just plan where you need to go um, have a shopping list, perhaps try and write it in an order that you know your supermarket. So if you know where the bread is, you know, have it all in that order of the way you walk around the supermarket. Just little things like that that can help you. But I always say, always use a trolley because you can rest on it, you can stop, you can have a bit of a pause and no one knows what you're up to, that you are just resting because then people can just think you're reading your shopping list or deciding what sort of soup you want to buy or um, what bread to get. So it doesn't look out of place stopping in the supermarket so just those are just some really top tips to help you with that and I think when it comes to housework think about what we talked about when it comes to making the bed you know use those same principles try and have plenty of rests um, if you've got someone that can help with the housework fabulous um, someone you know some of you might be in a position where you can afford to pay someone to come in to help with the cleaning and do those heavy jobs that are really, you know, either the jobs that you really don't like doing or the heavy jobs, uh, you know, perhaps think about having, uh, you know, trying to balance out those tasks. So like using the vacuum is hard work, it's heavy, and dusting is light work. So balance heavy tasks with light tasks. Take your time, pace it out, lots of rest, lots of breaks. What's important? What can I leave to another day? Anything like that, that will help you. So that's another really quick whistle chop stop tour through energy conservation. It might be that I come back and do some more sessions on it. And you know, if we get some feedback and you're finding these are really valuable, then you know I'll I'll, I'll do some some more work on it and we'll spend some more time looking at different tips and hints. But I'm hoping that these have helped you and that you find them valuable and that. Um, and an enjoyable as well. Um, it's not quite the same as having you here with us live and I don't get the feedback and I don't get the questions asked but hopefully you're enjoying it. Good to see you, take care and bye for now.